Hello everyone, this is Linda Gabias from Lab Archives and I will be hosting our training session today for Carnegie Mellon University instructors on the classroom edition of Lab Archives. I do want to point out that we have technical support contact available, um, global support contact I should add, through support at labarchives.com. You are welcome to reach out to us at any time, no matter how big or small your question is. And also, I want to introduce you to some local resources that your library staff has put together to support you with the use of lab archives. So a separate web page has been created by your library team on lab archives. The URL for you to access that page is library.cmu.edu forward slash lab archives. So you see some introduction uh, introductory information to Lab Archives available here in terms of um, about messaging, what it is, how you get started, and some tips and tricks. Additionally, we do have links out to webinars that you can sign up for. These are public webinars put on by the Lab Archives support staff. We have a classroom edition webinar available every Wednesday at 12 Eastern. We also have a professional edition webinar available as well. Since we are focusing in on the classroom edition today, and the session is geared for instructors that want to use the Lab Archives notebook with students, there is a For Instructors tab that you can access for additional help and assistance. And throughout the pages, I want to refer to the email address that's posted here as well. This goes to your research data services team at Carnegie Mellon University. So if you want a, for example, set up a one-on-one -on -one consult to learn about the best practices and how lab archives can be used in the classroom, this is a great local resource that you can also reach out to. Additionally, your data services team will be sponsoring and hosting upcoming workshops. So I have your upcoming workshops URL posted at the top here, and you can see the schedule of upcoming sessions, and soon you'll have some choices of upcoming Lab Archives training that you can also take part in through your libraries. So we're going to go ahead and make a quick click back to the Lab Archives notebook here, and throughout the rest of our session, we'll be working within this course notebook to introduce you to the classroom edition of Lab Archives. So first of all, what is Lab Archives? It's a digital research notebook that can be used to securely store, search, and share your laboratory and research data online. It's cloud-based, which means that instructors and students can access the notebook with an internet connection on PCs, Macs, Androids, and iOS devices. Your classroom edition includes a leading interactive lab notebook for instructors and students, a curated library of, of uh, excuse me, lab course content through Lab Builder, and efficiency-driven course management tools. As you'll hear throughout their webinar, Lab Archives Classroom Edition is easy, flexible, and supports <clears throat> any number of students and costs much less than custom publishing. There is a separate edition of Lab Archives also available through Carnegie Mellon University, and that's our professional edition version, or also known as the researcher edition. So there's a separate recording available on that topic, and you can also get more information from your local data services team on using that particular version. What we wanna to go to next are the benefits of using Lab Archives in a course. So for instructors, you can manage and distribute course content, standardize workflows, improve communication with your students as well. It also saves you time by giving you access to student notebooks throughout the semester without having to physically collect the notebooks and take them away from your students. From the student perspective, Lab Archives supports collaboration and increases the opportunity for feedback. Some tools in the notebook will also be used in the real world, which gives student exposure to tools they'll encounter after graduation. How the Classroom Edition works. So today we'll cover the notebook, the curated library of lab course content through Lab Builder, and the course manager administrative tools, which allows you to add students to your course. Once students are added to a course, 
they receive a copy of the course notebook and they keep that notebook as their own. And within that notebook, they can then add their work to the course notebook and also begin completing and submitting course assignments. Our next step is to walk you through the process of actually creating a new master course notebook that you can then use and invite students to. So we'll start with a brief introduction of the structure of the master course notebook and take you through the notebook navigator and notebook manager tool. So if you look to the left here, this is the structure of our current notebook. So through our demo, we're going to use this notebook labeled Master Lab Archives 101. So I've already went ahead and created the notebook. It has some structure here. Lab Archives is really based uh, structure-wise on a hierarchy here. So within the notebook, you create folders. Within those folders, you can have subfolders. And then you'll find within folders, pages. And then within each page, you'll find entries. So we're going to spend some time building out the pages here and using different entry types for adding data into lab archives. At the bottom of each notebook, you have a little trash can there. That trash can holds on to your deleted items. Your deleted items are permanently stored, so we do not ever um, delete them permanently. We store them permanently instead. So this always gives you an opportunity to bring back any deleted content if something was inadvertently deleted, for example, or if you want to reuse some old content. So before we start creating some pages, let's walk you through how you can actually create a new notebook. When you do create a new notebook for the very first time, let me just preview for you your intro screen. As an instructor, this will be your brand new intro screen that you'll first see. This will walk you through Lab Builder. Okay. I'm going to preview Lab Builder for you in a few minutes. And again, Lab Builder is a way for you to sample and reuse existing content from our course library. But first, let's take you through creating a notebook. Now, if we go to this Notebooks 14 statement here, this indicates to me that I have 14 other notebooks. Okay. So this is my notebook manager, and I'll see the variety of other notebooks I have access to. Some of them may be other courses that I, uh, course notebooks that I have created for other things that I'm teaching. This is also where I would create my new notebook. I go to the plus symbol at the top of the page, and I just walk through the simple prompts here to create my notebook. So let's say I'm creating a new notebook called Master Lab Archives 202. We do always recommend that you use the word master when creating your notebook. So that's very evident to you that this is a notebook that you are going to share for course purposes. You're gonna share this with students. So it makes it kind of stand out from the rest of your notebooks there. Optionally then, you can choose a layout no lab classroom or from another notebook okay. if you choose one of our layouts you can always edit or modify the layout let's say you want to use the classroom layout that's just going to give you these folders already available and made in your account the folders of course are empty you've got to add the content but you can delete the folders if you don't want a calendar folder delete it rename it okay so it's very flexible here you can also base a layout on a previous notebook you've created. You simply will click Create Notebook, and then you'll automatically be within that notebook where you can start adding content. For our purposes today, we already have a notebook that we've created, so we'll just cancel out of this page. And that takes us back into the structure of our current notebook. Next up, let's create a new folder and a page. So you'll notice that there is a plus symbol available here to create new folders under the current folder structure and under the page structure. Let's start by creating a new folder, and we're going to call our new folder Experiment 1. So we click on that symbol, click Add New Folder, and add the appropriate label. Within that folder, I need pages, because the contents can reside within the pages. So we're going to open up the folder, Take a page, add new page, and we'll call that assignment one. Okay. 
So we've got a new folder, new page. Next, we'll add entries to the page. But before we do that, let's talk about organization. We can use the drag drop feature to reorganize the placement of our materials. So this experiment one, I need it to appear before experiment two. But I can just drag drop it and put it in its appropriate place. Also, what we're able to do if you right click on a folder or a page, you can use our other tools such as renaming the folder or the page or deleting it if you need to. Now, one of the newest ways that you can add content into Lab Archives is through our Lab Builder tool. I want to talk about that for a few moments here. So, in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my notebook manager. So that's the notebooks 14 message that I have here. And all instructors will have access now to Lab Builder automatically. So as soon as you create your account, you'll have this notebook already available for you called Lab Builder. And Lab Builder is where you can sample and copy from our course materials. Okay. Lab Builder is a library of course content across many different topics. You have the ability to modify and use this content for your course without any additional costs. So for example, let me go to the welcome page because it defaulted to the last page I viewed previously. And within Lab Builder, you'll find three types of content that you can use. There's labs, protocols, and course packs. So you'll see these sections here, labs, protocols, course packs. Let's start with labs. So you see labs broken up to three subject areas where you can then drill down to find more detailed information. So within labs, what you'll find includes background materials, procedures, and assignments. So for example, post-lab assignment electric fields. We have some samples, procedure, okay, including protocol. Okay, so let's close that. Let's preview protocols next. So you see it organized here by subject area. Protocols include simple procedures. So we can see that outlined there. And then finally, we have course packs. So let's minimize that, jump into course packs. Course packs are curated collections of materials for semester long lab courses. Each type of content that you'll find is formatted the same as you've got consistency in layout there. How you would use this information is to use the copy to another notebook feature to use the content in your own course. So for example, if I wanted to look at this common method section, and let's say I wanted this DNA purification information, okay, I can right click on that to copy to another notebook, and I'm going to copy from this Lab Builder notebook to my course, uh, my master course notebook that we're using for our demonstration. So that pull down list will contain the list of all the notebooks I have access to. So I'm going to choose appropriately, click start copy, and all the materials on this page will now copy over into my notebook. Okay. So then if I go back into my notebook, I see the new DNA purification materials have been added. What if I meant to add it to a specific folder and I forgot to? No biggie. So remember, I can just drag, drop, put it within my lab builder example folder. And now the DNA purification materials are nicely filed away for me to use later if I'd like. So lab builder, again, it's one of the newest ways to add content into lab archives by using the copy to another notebook feature. Now we wanna go back to that previous experiment one, assignment one page and folder that we created. So right here, experiment one, assignment one. I wanna give you several examples of how you can add content to your new course notebook. So we're gonna use a variety of entry types. The first entry type we're gonna use is called rich text entry. You can insert, by clicking create something new here, which opens up our uh, assignment entry, or excuse me, not our assignment entry, our entry menu. And that's where you can choose the entry type. We want to use rich text. 
essentially like a word processing tool that's available here where you can add, you know, just type it by hand, copy and paste the information from another document. So for example, I want to add a protocol and I happen to have my protocol available in a Word document. I am copying that. I realize you can't see me copying it because it's on another monitor, but you'll see pasting it here. I'm going to paste it in to our text box, click OK, with my protocol. Okay, so that's the protocol that I wanted to enter. I'm going to click Save to Page. Before I do that, let me quickly show you. You can customize it, bold it, italicize, change the font style, the size. We're going to click Save to Page. I've got my protocol available there now. Okay, so that's my first entry type. Now, I need to add some more content to this page here. So I want to go ahead and attach a document. So we're going to use our attachment feature next. So we go back to our entry type menu. We'll choose attachment. When it comes to attachments, you can browse for them from your computer or you can drag and drop them. I'll give you an example of browsing. And I am going to go ahead and take this image here. So that image that I'm going to add, I'm going to click Save to Page. So now I've added my image. Okay. So again, this, this includes the materials that all my students are going to see when I share the notebook with them. Additionally, I want to add some headings, and that's another entry type. So we can add headings in mean, two ways. We can use the entry type menu to select heading, but also when you have multiple headings on the screen, you can direct your heading or your attack, uh, excuse me, your entry, wherever you'd like, by using that insert flag. So I'm going to insert heading. Okay. And this is our example. We'll click Save to Page. So now I've got a heading, which does kind of visually break up the page here. And if I wanted another heading at the top, I can also use the insert feature, click heading. We'll call that protocol. Click Save to Page. So now I've got my protocol at the top with my affiliated steps and my example image next. I can continue building out this page. Questions, for example, tables where I might want to um, have my students enter in the data, the results that they're finding. Okay, so we're just kind of giving you a, a, a example of some of the entry types here, but can continue adding to that page. Up next, let's add an assignment. Okay. So for instructors, assignments can be used as a bookmark for grading. We recommend that an assignment is placed at the top of the page, and that's for ease of locating by students to see that work is needed. Additionally, we recommend one assignment per page, because in most cases, the page is going to be locked when the assignment is submitted. So if you had multiple assignments on a page, you'd get locked out of that second one. So let's just show you how easy it is to, to add an assignment. We're going back to our entry options there. We're going to choose assignment as an entry. My default has my new entries added to the bottom of the page. But remember, we recommend that they be added to the top. So we'll modify that in a moment. But before I do that, let's add some details to this particular assignment. So let's call this assignment 01. We're going to enter the assignment name. Description is optional, then you want to put total points. So are you grading out of a scale of 100 or a 10? You can put that in there appropriately. We're going to click Save to Page. Again, this is at the bottom of the page. I want it at the top. When you hover over an entry, you'll see this entry toolbar. So each entry has its own toolbar. I'm going to use the arrow features to bump this to the top of the page. So that's another way that you can customize the look and feel of your notebook. So now I've got, again, that assignment available at the top. If I need to, I can use that pencil icon to edit it as well. If I need to, for example, change my total points or the, um, the assignment name, I can do that there. Additionally, other tools include adding tags, links, comments, and some of the tools available from our gear icon, which we'll discuss a little later on. So we have our sample page built out right now, but again, it's somewhat of an abbreviated example. You could, again, add additional content here, suggested reading, links out to other websites, 
PDF documents. You can really build this out uh, in, in a more customized structure that again, is gonna be specific to what you're covering in your course. I'd like to next talk about example layouts. So I have a folder here with some sample layouts for you. And this is gonna give you just some ideas and inspiration in terms of how you might organize your pages because you might want to reuse that organization as a template. So we have three examples here, including minimal, page, and content rich. The minimal layout includes an experiment per folder, and each folder has a pre, post, and in lab page. So you see minimal layout, experiment one, pre lab, in lab, post lab. Okay, so not all of them have examples there. Then when you come to page outline layout, all of your pre, post, and in lab work is in one page. So I click on experiment one, you see experiment title, experiment background and theory, procedure, apparatus, et cetera. So this one really utilizes the use of headings to separate the content on the page. You see that experiment one, two, three, four, et cetera. Content rich layout separate, has a separate page for background, procedures, data, and observations. I'm sorry, let me open that and reports. Your folder layout and organization is in your control. So you can make it as simple or as detailed as you'd like. A good folder structure is gonna help you with the ease of navigation and also for standardizing your workflow. So once you get that correct, you know, a uh, template in place structure you like, it's very easy to reuse that content. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. Let's go back to our page outline layout. And let's say that I like this particular structure, okay? And I want to reuse it and create a new experiment five page. So I'm going to take the folder, right click it, and copy the existing page that I'm on. So I'm on experiment one. I'm gonna copy that page. And then select a page to copy from. So that's under my example layouts, page outline layout, experiment one. I want to use all the headings, all the features of the page. I want to update that name. So it's having it, instead of having an experiment one copy, I want to call it experiment five. Click create page. And you'll notice experiment five has just popped up within the notebook. I can click on that. Now, when I did that though, it did copy the assignment. I need to make some adjustments to that because it's going to be a different assignment number. So I'm gonna edit that. Just adjust my assignment number there correctly. And click Save to Page. So again, it's very easy to copy over that information and reuse it within your notebook. So up next, what we want to do is to create the course from our course manager. So imagine at this point, We've created enough content within the course notebook that I'm ready to start inviting students. It's the start of the semester. I need to get the information out into their hands. And that's going to be the next step. We're going to do that through our course manager tool. So from the instructor perspective, I said we're still looking at that perspective. We want to go to your skewer icon, upper right-hand corner. We want to go to our utilities. Within the utilities is your course manager. So this is where essentially we're gonna take that master notebook, invite students so they can begin adding um, their assignments and their information to their own version of the notebook. The course manager is gonna take you through a series of five steps to officially create the course and invite students. We're gonna go through each of those steps next. First up is the course information page. So we're gonna name the course, give it a description, choose the correct notebook, for example, and add additional um, default settings, length, and course end date. I should say one important point before we even start sharing the notebook. Don't feel obligated to finish your entire course notebook before the course starts. Okay? You can share the notebook before all that content is created, and you can always add more content and update along the way. So what you would do, for example, let's say you've, you've um, got a quarter of your course completed, but it's time to start the course. You can invite your students 
And then as you add new content, you'll notice you have this Update Student Notebooks button. So you can always just click on that as you want to push out new content to your students. So with this particular course, let's give it a name. Our Lab Archive Spring 2020. Description is optional. Base student notebooks on. That's important. Remember, we called ours the Master Course Notebook. So Master Lab Archives 101. So I remember that's a course notebook that I'm going to share. Next, let's cover some of the settings. You'll notice several of them already checked on for you. You can always deselect them if you'd like. First up, allow students to share their notebooks with other students. This is great for collaborative purposes. So if you're gonna have group projects or group assignments, this will allow them to share content with each other. Turned off is allow students to sign pages in their notebooks. This is disabled because it can essentially lock pages. So we don't want students to be able to lock pages other than likely by submitting an assignment. You can also allow teaching assistants to add or delete sections. That's up to you, depends on how hands-on or ha how hands-off you are in the management of your course. By default, restricting teaching assistants access to their sections only is turned on. This is for FERPA compliance so that a TA can only see student and course and grade information for their section only. You can also have assignment pages locked after assignment is submitted. That's a pretty standard um, function and use of lab archives. That's also a way for you to monitor when, when things have been completed. So once an assignment is submitted, page is locked, only the instructor can come back in to unlock the page, and as well as at the grading point. Also have turned on the comments feature where comments are automatically shown for students and teaching assistants. You can adjust your course length. And finally, you want to enter your course end date. So we'll go ahead and end our course at the end of April. Click next. That takes us to section two, which is adding sections. Let's go ahead and add some sections here. And we're going to have a Monday, Wednesday section. I'm going to add it. And then we are going to also have a Tuesday, Thursday section. So we successfully have those sections added. So we're going to go to our next step, just adding teaching assistants. So I'm going to type out the name of my TA here, or excuse me, the email of my, my TA. I'm going to then appropriately assign them to the right section and click next. So I don't know if you saw that there, but if I go back to teaching assistance, we'll see that TA at labarchives.com has been assigned to the Monday, Wednesday section. So then that takes us to course signup URLs followed by students. Step four and five are actually um, both for um, sharing the notebook in terms of how students can get access to the notebook. And there's two ways to add students. Via the sign up URL, which tends to be something that's used often too if you have an online course management system like a Moodle or a Canvas that you may use, you can share your sign up URL. But I'm going to bypass that and I'm going to demonstrate how you can add uh, students to courses via email. So we're going to go to step five, do that. You may copy and paste them in, for example, you may have a list um, of emails already that you have for students that are signed up for your course, you can add them that way. So bear with me here, I'm going to add in a few email addresses. So for example, I've added in two students. I'm going to assign them to the Monday, Wednesday section.
After adding the students, this page is going to refresh here in just a moment. And now at the bottom, you'll see a list of the students, their names, and the section they've been assigned to. And you'll see some other features there, such as moving, removing, sending emails, and sending announcements. It's important to note here that even though I've entered in the email address, a student name was tied to these, these two particular students. That's because these two students happen to already have Lab Archives accounts. Therefore, we are able to associate and tie their student name here correctly. You may invite students and come to this list and see that no student name is included. That will happen when and if the student doesn't yet have a Lab Archives account. When you initially invite a student, they will receive an email notice, an official uh, invitation to join the course notebook. It's after they join the course notebook that you'll see that student name listed there. So that's if they did not prior to that point have a Lab Archives account. So let's save course and exit. And we've officially tied that master course notebook to this new Lab Archive Spring 2020 notebook, and I've invited students. So what I want to do from this point is take you to the student perspective to access the notebook. We'll come back later to talk about grading and ending the course. So bear with me here. I am going to log in as a student. So just one second here while we get that up. And as that signs into my student account, I'll go ahead and share that screen with you. So it's going through the process right now of logging in. And I'll drag that over here in just a moment. Okay, so I've got it up here and I'm gonna move it over into this monitor. So now you're able to view it from the student perspective. So what makes a student perspective different than the instructor perspective? First of all, what you'll see at the top here listed, student notebook. When it comes to the course name, next to the course name, you will see the student's name. So you see Lab Archive Spring 2020 Maggie Monster. The structure of the notebook is the same. You'll see some of the changes we made. Remember we created an experiment folder earlier, experiment one with page assignment one. You'll see that available now. Assignment at the top, my protocol and my sample image. Okay, so all of that has now moved over. Now the student has their own version of the notebook that they can work off of. Let's give you an example here of um, working with, you know, let's say this is an assignment page and let's say part of our assignment page is to, um, to annotate an image, okay? It could be to answer some questions do some assigned readings, there could be some questions, for example, that, that we need to look at. But just for our sample here, let's look at this image and let's look at our annotate image. Let's say part of our assignment has me circling a particular portion here that I need to kind of call out to my professor. So I'm gonna use my annotation tool. Oh, let me adjust the color. Let's say I'm gonna make it red and I'm gonna search circle the iodine section here. Actually, let me make that a little wider. And let's say that's what I need to circle. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back into my notebook. You see how my changes were saved there. Okay, so we see the live annotations within the notebook. Let's say I've made a mistake to the page. It doesn't have to be within an annotation. It could be the questions I've answered, you know, typed out manually. It could be anything within the entry, okay? So what I'm going to show you here is how you can use the page revision or the entry revision tool to correct your mistakes. So we've got this little icon here, which is our gear icon. We're gonna to go to the revisions. Let's say I've circled the wrong section here. I can see the different revisions and I can see the original that my professor created. I'm gonna to revert to that original version. Click OK. So now I'm back to the cleaned up version. So now I can come in again 
making my changes the appropriate way using the annotation tool. Okay, so just as before, I'm gonna make that adjustment. It's really easy for me to do that. Okay, now instead of that, let's say I'm in here, I'm going to the revisions tool, and I decide that I'm just gonna delete it. You know, I just, I did it wrong. Let me delete the image. But I say to myself, no, that, I wasn't supposed to delete that image. I was just supposed to maybe correct my errors. So I've got a problem, right? Because then we've deleted that image that we need to complete our assignment. It's okay, don't panic. What you can do is to use the page tool revisions at the top via the little toolbox icon, upper right-hand corner. I can go to view revisions and go back to that image I accidentally deleted and bring it back on the page. So just shows you kind of some of the security features built in because naturally mistakes happen. You're doing something you didn't mean to rather than deleting it, maybe you needed to edit it. But that just shows you how you can make those corrections and changes along the way. Let's go look at the assignment. And let's say I've created, I, I've, I've completed various steps, processes, the parts of the assignment, okay? And I'm ready to submit the assignment. You'll notice here, again, I'm at the student perspective. I can click update and submit, okay? What you can do, if you worked in a group, you can choose your other students who you worked with. Now, remember when I created the course, I only, um, invited two students, but if I had a class of 25, all 25 students would be listed there. So that would allow you to assign a group grade later on as well. Okay. Let's say I just worked by myself here. I can click submit, and you'll notice there is a message there sedating. You will no longer be able to edit the page or the assignment once it is submitted. Click submit. And that page is locked. See that page lock at the top? Only the professor or TA, the instructor, can unlock the page. So if you've submitted, submitted too soon, made a mistake, you can speak to your professor directly about having the page unlocked. But once it's submitted, it is permanently locked there. You also, what's nice, have a timestamp here at the point of submission. So if it was due on a particular day and time, you can also cross check to be sure, okay, I completed in time, but also your professor will know if you completed it late as well. Once it's locked, you'll see no pencil or edit features available. So that was from the student perspective, how you can submit an assignment once an assignment has been added to a page. Let's go back to the instructor perspective and look at grading and assign, uh, looking at the grading and assignment navigator tool. So this is our master notebook that we were viewing earlier. So let me just refresh my page here. So this is where we were originally adding the content to the notebook before we shared it with students. So remember, I can continue to add new content. Now that I have shared and created a course from this notebook, you'll notice I've got this new tool. This is my course manager tool because this notebook is linked to a course. So that's another way for me to get easy access to that course manager. So now when we're back in the course manager tool, you'll see it defaults me into the students tab here. It shows me my two students that I have in the course, some of their recent activities, so Maggie Monster, for example, just recently updated an assignment on December 26th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And I can access her notebook and comments and uh, different, different uh, assignments that are tied to it as well. So you can click on the notebook icon or the open assignment navigator tool when you're ready to start grading. And that's what we wanna focus in on next. So I can click open assignment navigator. I see at the top here for Open Assignment Navigator, a list of students in my course. So I have Lisa and Maggie. For Lisa, I can now go to a particular assignment. Okay, so I see the number, the assignment number and name. The assignment status, if available here. 
So not submitted or submitted. So if we wanted to look at the submitted assignment, for example, we now are viewing that from Maggie Monster's email, uh, from her account. We can go through each of the entries, review the assignment that was submitted. So whether it's questions that were answered, images that were uploaded, whatever it may be. From here, I can assign the grade. It does remind me that it's a total of 10 points. I can add in the grade there and assign it. Additionally, though, within each entry, there's the entry toolbar where you can add comments. Okay, so let's say it looks like you forgot step nine. You can add that comment. That comment will be visible within Maggie's assignment as well. If I need to make a change to the grade, maybe I want her to update it and she's updated it and now it's correct. All right, I can always update that grade. Okay. And you also notice there's that reassign student as well. So you can push the assignment back to them and unlock it. So I can do that the same way. So if I wanted to grade all of the CMU classroom assignments today, I could just change it to the next student that might be available as well. Now that assignment, when it's graded, let's go back to our course manager tool. Then I can go to grades. And I also see now updated for Maggie is the first classroom assignment grade 10. And I'll be able to see that view for each of the class assignments that has been added to the notebook after they're graded as well. And we'll tell you who the grader is in case it was a TA that may have done the grading for you. From this grades tab, I'll show you that you can also copy, print, and have exports. And you could hide the grader information as well if you didn't want to see that, uh, the TA information included, for example. From here, let me go back to the students tab and quickly show you one of the cool features, which is to send announcements. You can click the send announcement button there. You can decide to send to all students or select it to students. And let's say you want to let them know that there's a quiz on Friday. You can have that announcement sent and it'll be added to all of your students' notebooks. Very quickly here, let's go back to my uh, previous student view. Okay, so let me refresh the page. So this is back to my student view earlier, which is Maggie. Remember, we, we um, assigned a grade. So I want to show you. When Maggie goes back to that assignment one, she sees her grade. You'll see it cannot be edited after it was graded. And also, I see the posted message. So we posted the uh, quiz on Friday message here. So that's not posted at the top of the notebook. So that shows you how it looks, the grading from the student perspective and any messages you may have sent. Additionally, remember we posted a comment to Maggie? So that comment displays here. It looks like he forgot step nine. And finally, let's talk about ending the course and the options that you have. I'm going to minimize this page. We're going back into the course manager. So again, from the instructor perspective, I'm in the course manager tool. At the very bottom there is your end course feature. We have three options. Reusing the course will keep your course notebook and the information so you can reuse it. So you might simply edit, remove sections, maybe you want to add different TAs, okay? Your students will be dismissed and they can take the notebook with them, but they can't access the notebook. Um, excuse me. So, so students are dismissed. The students take their notebooks with them. I'm clarifying that point. They won't be able to access their notebook, just a copy of the notebook that they get. And then you can access, uh, you can, excuse me, add new students. Okay. And I should also say that you cannot access their notebooks once the course has ended as an instructor archive course. 
So that makes all student notebooks read only. And that also sometimes is a lot of some universities require that for retaining, you know, data and grades. But if you need to refer back to a course, it also allows you to see how students did comparing semester by semester. Okay, so you want that information archived. Deleting the course, that's going to delete everything, including the course information. Students can keep their notebooks, but the instructor will not have access to student notebooks. Okay, so that completely removes it as a course. Maybe this, it was a one-time course, something you don't plan to reuse. Okay. It does not delete your master course notebook. It's just the course via the course management tool. Once you have access to the course manager tool, I'll quickly show you in the upper right hand corner, you can always add a new course. So you can create a brand new one if you'd like. Just by clicking on that, and that'll take you through the same five steps. So finishing up here, let's go back to where we started. Okay. So we finished up the presentation on the classroom edition of Lab Archives for Carnegie Mellon University instructors. What we showed you here is how you can create your own master course notebook, customize that to include different entry types, attachments, images, how you could sample uh, content from Lab Builder. We talked about structure, layout, and organization. From there, what we did is that we used our course manager tool to essentially create an official course off of that notebook, where you can then invite students to the notebook and students will receive a copy of that notebook that they can work in throughout the semester. We also discussed how you can, for example, assign TAs, how you can grade course content as well. Okay? So those were all part of our session today. So again, there was multiple components, how you create a notebook, customize that notebook, how you use the course manager tool to invite students, and how you can also grade assignments within the course manager tool. As a final reminder, the university has created a number of local resources. Now, first of all, you can always contact our support team, support at labarchives.com. But if you want some customized, uh, kind of a customized approach there with your libraries, you can also work with your library staff directly. They have their email posted here. So that's to your data services team at Carnegie Mellon University for assistance. And then through your Lab Archives local web page, again, posted through your Carnegie Mellon University library site, you have some additional help and assistance here an about page, and some specific tips for instructors, which is the focus of our training session today. So we will wrap up. I wanna thank you for your time and attention. Please reach out, support at labarchives.com for additional assistance, or through the library uh, data services email address posted here on this page. Thanks again.